Howdy, listeners. Welcome to the Snowies Camping Show. You are with Ben and Lauren. How you going, Lauren? I'm awesome. Awesome. Hey, we've been given the topic of talking about how to keep food fresh, but you know what I reckon is missing? We've got, got a few props on the table here, but yeah. there's clearly, you know, sandwiches or some form of food missing from the table. It would have been nice. Would have been nice to have some food. Table, but anyway. Been some plied with know, some nibbles. It would have been good, but it's not here, so we'll deal with it. But um, I guess uh, the, if we think about the topic, it, it, how to keep your food fresh when camping, we probably need to... Maybe expand on that a little and talk about um, how to not just keep food fresh, but maybe try and eat fresher or eat nicer because yeah. you can't always keep food fresh for a whole camping trip, can you? And you, want, and you want to feel good. Like, you know, if you're going away for a week and you're literally just eating processed packaged foods like baked beans and two-minute noodles and things like that the whole ordinary. time, you're not – you're not going to feel good. And that tent's not going to be nice to sleep That's in. right. And yeah. it's also not good to start off really great and then get halfway through your trip and be like, oh, my bananas and my apples are festy and so now I've yep. got nothing to eat. Yep. So, the yeah, the, the more efficient, I guess, or the more practice you can get at keeping your food um, lasting longer and being tastier and yep. for longer, the longer you can go away, like the longer yeah, your trips can be. Absolutely. I guess the, the, the principle I use when I pack is to I, I take fresh stuff. And eat the fresh stuff first. And yeah. this can be applied to hiking as well, I think, because yeah. you can take fresh stuff hiking. Yeah. Um, it's going to last maybe a day or two depending on the the, the environment. Mm. But that fresh stuff you want to consume first and then move on to, I don't like the word process, but but the more canned or, yeah. or sealed stuff that's going to last The longer. pantry so items. Pantry items, yeah, this, with the long shelf life items, yeah. yeah. So we, I know I take fruit and, and veg and mm-hmm. um, doesn't all fit in the fridge because the fridge is often full of all the other stuff that has to stay cold. Yeah. Um, so it goes in another slightly sp- a cooler spot in my car. But if I'm going to make, say, a pasta sauce or something that's got um, capsicum and, and onions and that sort of thing, the onions last pretty well. Um, I'll use that within the first few nights yeah. to make it. And then once I'm done, I'll then move on to if there's another pasta, a, a jar of pasta sauce or something yeah. that I can use later in the trip. So yeah. you're still eating fresh. Yeah. What's um that that's kind of the principles I, I follow anyway. Yeah. But I think um, you've you've got a you've got a reasonable size family that you cater for. So you've probably got some yes. pretty good ideas here. And I mean, I guess eating fresh and eating good is important, yeah. especially when you've got kids like you wanna and even if it's just yourself, you st- you wanna feel sustained, you wanna feel healthy. Uh but the thing that I hate more than anything is trying to cook a big meal that's a good meal whilst you're camping to have mm. to do all that prep and then, you know, you're packing all your individual ingredients and then trying to make them last longer and things like that. So not too long ago there was a trip that we did. I think we were away for maybe about eight days off off the top of my head and I was a bit more organised this time around. Like I t- mm. tend to not be as organised as I'd like to be. Um, and I thought I would try or making a whole bunch of big batches of, of good meals at home. I think I did some curries and I did some nacho mints. I did a, a beef stroganoff as well. Also did like mashed potato and things like that. Cooked mm-hmm. all that, prepared all that. We've got a dehydrator and um, awesome. I didn't mean to say dehydrator then. I meant to say vac sealer. Vac sealer. I also do have a dehydrator but we have a vac sealer which yeah, is yeah. the point of what I was trying to get yep. to in this one. And, uh, yeah, I just ended up portioning out those meals, even the mashed potato, popped yep. them in the vac sealer bag, left them open, put them in the freezer and as I sort of froze a little bit, I just went in and shaped them and made them big, quite nice oh, yeah. and flat. And then you when they're fit them in the fridge, fit heaps them in the fridge, of, yeah. yeah, heaps of them. So then when they were fully frozen, then I finished off vac sealing them. And then when we were away camping, all you need to do is boil up a pot of water and you pop your vac seal bags in there and it heats the food up, or you yeah. can cut it open and pop it in your fry pan and you don't have any of that prep mess. Or and you get this beautiful meal like you're camping day six and you're smashing hot potato and yep. beef stroganoff awesome. and oh it's so So it's good. prep beforehand, but it means you prep. spend more time just sitting down enjoying being out camping. That's right. So. And I think you end up packing less and there's less stuff that you have to keep fresh because you don't have to worry about the beef strips or the onions or all of those components of making a meal like that. Yep. Yep. that you might not get to until day four, five, six or whatever. You don't yep. have to worry about trying to keep that fresh. Does that make sense? Yeah, and yeah. I reckon, um, and quote me if I'm wrong, but I reckon you'd have less waste too because if you take, say, a capsicum or an onion, you cut it up, mm. you've got a bit, little bit left over, haven't you? And you yep. should really carry that out. Yep. Um, if you're taking packaged stuff, you've got cans, plastic containers to yep. take out. If you've got um, vacuum-sealed food, like what you're talking about, 
uh, all the prep's done, so all the food scraps you've left in your, hopefully your compost at yeah, home yep, and green exactly. bin or whatever. Mm -hmm. And all you've got is, if you've got the right vacuum sealer, is a resealable plastic bag that That's you right. can wash out. Yep. Uh, and, and use, use again. for the next trip yeah. or, or use on the same trip if you mm -hmm. like to vacuum seal stuff as you go to, yeah. to make it stay fresh. So, And uh, and you touched on dehydrator before, but if you're using vacuum sealer and dehydrator together, you've gone next level. So you can have your fresh foods to start with, your non-vacuum sealed and yeah. non-use that, then move on to your vacuum sealed stuff because that's going to last a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. And if you're away for long enough to and, and that well prepared, you can then move on to your dehydrated vacuum sealed yeah. foods. So you're still eating awesome meals right in and you're not just cracking open a can of baked beans and some of that That's you know true. long life non-refrigerated cheese that you find on the bottom shelf of the <laughs> supermarket yeah. that I'm not sure what it's made of but nobody it, knows like if you desperate it's okay yeah. but it's nothing flash yeah I mean yeah. I guess the other thing is um though on the back of that having a dehydrator or a vac sealer is a bit of a privilege like I feel pretty lucky to be able to have those two yeah, items and so you know a lot of people might have one or the other or a lot of people actually might not have it at all. So I'm mm. very aware of the fact that my setup isn't necessarily going to work for everybody. Yep. But um, so I guess if you don't have access to a vaccilla or you don't have access to a dehydrator, the next best option is going to be things like having a really good, uh, like quality ice box. Yep. Straight up. And then possibly even your 12 volt car fridge. Yeah, freezer. that makes it easy. I guess I've said everything on the assumption that people would have a fridge or an ice box, but that certainly adds extra challenges, doesn't it? If you've yeah. got a fridge, it makes things a whole lot easier. Um, if you don't, then you need to go down that dehydrated option. And just to mention too, you can use an oven as a dehydrator. It takes you can, a bit longer. That's true. Um, but there there are other ways to to do it. Um, an ice box though is probably a more affordable way. And we're talking about like a proper ice box with good insulation. Yep. And I know I've traveled with an ice box before and, and you can kind of layer it, frozen stuff on the bottom, mm -hmm. cooler stuff on the top and kind of layers of paper in between to sort of manage. Some of those works. ice boxes just to interject there also have, uh, you can accessorize them with baskets, which just sit under the lid. So if you've got yep. softer stuff. You don't necessarily have to pack it all on top of each yep. other. You can put it in top of the baskets that sit inside of the, yep. so the yeah, ice boxes. as well. Bananas are mashed, That's right. yeah. bouncing or around like, amongst your ice bricks. Yeah, if you want to have yeah. a fancy night, you can have some camembert cheese or whatever. It's not yeah. smushed into the, <laughs> into the molding. But, I mean, the worst thing about and having an ice box as well, I think, just in my historical experience, is where you get a couple of days in and all of a sudden the bottom of your esky is just like Sludgy. this swimming cesspool of just rank yeah. food and you don't know what's going on. It's hard to manage the temperature, I suppose, and that like a fridge you can manage the temperature yeah. closer like you would at home, but an mm. ice box is, is harder, isn't it? So, yeah. Um, I guess, so I, if we move on from what you said, I suppose, with if you don't have a you know, a good fridge, like they're an expensive item, so not everyone's going to have a fridge. Mm. You can use the ice box for fresh stuff early on, but say three or four days in and it's a 30-degree sort of, um, you know, 30-degree days, mm -hmm. it's going to get hard to keep those things cold. Yeah. Um, so you need to move on to packaged food then, I yep. suppose, don't you? So you, Yeah, you would need um, to, I would say. Yeah, we, we've talked about pretty ordinary processed foods, I suppose, but you can – being like make nicer food out of processed yeah, foods. You, like can. you can buy nice wraps that are vacuum sealed and they, they've got a longer shelf oh, life. Oh, yeah, like flatbreads like and flat things breads, like that. Yeah. yeah. They're like going to last longer than normal bread, which yeah. in a hot car, normal bread tends to get a little bit stale and not as nice a few days in, dries out a little bit. But yeah. a, um, the flatbread or the wraps will, will last a bit longer. Eggs as well. Like eggs are a really good, yeah. good um, staple to have that you don't need to refrigerate necessarily i mean if it's obviously stomping hot you don't want to have you keep eggs. them cool don't you, you, room. Yeah, yeah yeah like you keep them you can have them in in your pantry at home so as yep. long as they're not in the sun yeah you could they could be yep. with you out of refrigeration yeah. yep and then fresh eggs is is gonna you know awesome for breakfast so yeah absolutely over the top of just cereal or or um toast over a gas stove or something isn't, yeah. isn't that nice and you um, can we'll, use uh sorry i'm interrupting no no again. no not at all but the it. rice noodles you know like pad thai noodles and things like that you yep. can I, I know you can get maggi noodles but often they're not necessarily yeah. super nutritious and you don't get a huge amount but you can get like a huge packet of pad thai noodles for 80 cents or something like that and yep. if you want a bit of a difference of pasta um and it just sort of cooks the same way and you can chuck in like 
you can I know you can get even just from your normal supermarket dehydrated peas and Deb and stuff. I, I remember when that. I was a kid yeah. like going away camping and stuff on on like um with scouts and whatever was always you had your Deb mashed potato. That yeah. was the best. I love that stuff. I, I reckon um an Asian supermarket is really good too because they yeah. they've nailed the dehydrated food like mushrooms and so much yes. dehydrated stuff you can get from an Asian grocer that yeah. we don't have in I guess Australian when I say Australian cuisine, we kind of cover a lot of different cultures with our food. But mm. I found an Asian grocer could have a lot of dehydrated stuff that you just you boil up. So if you're making a pasta sauce, you can throw some dehydrated mushrooms and stuff in. Yeah. That's just going to travel without refrigeration really easily. Your su- surprise peas. Um, you touched on noodles before, but you can get those packs of like udon or hokkan noodles yeah. that just require hot water. You put them in and they're, they're actually pretty good. So. Oh, yeah, they're like par-cooked already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and they, the but they're sealed. They don't yeah. refrigeration, yeah. they're sealed. So you yeah. can just keep them in a, in, a, in a food box. They don't have to be in an ice box or a fridge, but you can keep them in a food box, mm. just add hot water, and they're good to go. In fact, sometimes you can eat them without even that. They're not quite they're not yeah. the same texture. I mean, I guess also fresh fruits, like things like carrots. Well, they last, yeah. Yeah, and like even cucumbers, apples, like there's still a fair amount of fresh food that you can get. You don't even necessarily need an icebox or an esky or or whatever you want to call it for them. You can just have them in a tub. I mean, I find that um, because we got a a couple of packets of storage crates and things that we keep our kitchen stuff in. But if you've got your food in those, I've noticed they tend to go bad because they sit in like a plastic tub without ventilation. But I find that if you have them in things like carrots and whatever, if they're in Okay. more of like a cardboard box or a breathable tub or yeah, sometimes right. if you're using a plastic tub and you put a bit of paper towel or something in it as well. Um, you reckon that, it lasts longer? Well, I feel like it does. Okay. Maybe I've learned something today. I, I don't do that. I just put it in tubs but maybe I, I might try that next yeah, time. Yeah, and I ventilation. think sometimes if I want to be fancy because sometimes I just like a salad, yep. if you want to take salad greens, we got a bit of a garden I know, but if you wanted to get greens from the, from the supermarket or whatever, yep. if you put them in a tub that has paper towel on the bottom, if they sweat or if they're off gas or they're doing anything like that or there's temperature changes where there's condensation, that's the start. Or that's the the part that contributes to that food right. breaking down and going gross. Yep. So with paper towel in the bottom of it that absorbs that liquid or that moisture. Okay. It will last a lot longer. Well, there's a hot tip of the day, I reckon, for everyone to mm-hmm. keep a bit of uh, those foods that don't require you know really cold refrigeration. Yeah. Just to keep them fresh a little bit longer, yeah. early in the trip. Yeah, keep them in a cool spot and get a bit of ventilation and paper, paper towel to to get all that the moisture yeah. and stuff. Hot tip, lasts for a lot longer. What about? I'm, I'm kind of thinking on the go here. What about milk, um, mm. juice? I mean, juice. I guess you can get this reconstituted sort of fruit juice and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a bit hard to get around uh, fresh juice. Eventually, if you've run out of juice, you've run out of juice. You've got to keep it in the fridge. So you could get the reconstituted juice, I yeah. suppose. I'm not a big or like fan the, of that. Uh, what do they call it? Um, like the UHT packing UHT. milks and juices and oh, stuff? Oh, yeah, yeah. Some of them aren't that much juice. But for milk, the UHT milk's probably your next best option. I don't yeah. think it tastes as good as fresh, but it travels. Sometimes I reckon it does taste better. I mean, it doesn't taste as good as like the premium awesome milk, but no. I reckon, I don't know, something about the flavour of it, it makes yeah, me okay. feel like it tastes a bit better. Yeah, okay. Maybe certain brands are better than others. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Maybe I'm just a but strange I, one. <laughs> <laughs> but I always carry some UHT milk. Yeah. I've taken powdered milk before as well, probably more for a hiking trip because yeah. it, it's really light and mm. I can kind of put that in a Ziploc bag with some muesli and mm-hmm. just add water. But I reckon for camping, UHT milk's the way to go because you can just keep that in your food box um, and it doesn't matter what the temperature is, that's going to stay comfortable and put it in the fridge as you need it so you've got cold milk ready to go. Mm. Uh and I just take the fresh milk early on in the mm-hmm. trip. Uh, cheese. Uh, hard, hard, you're better off with hard cheeses, yeah. I reckon. You've got a much better bet going with a hard cheese to last you yep. a full trip yep. as opposed to the soft cheeses. Yeah. I've had some people keep some cheese out of refrigeration and just cool. I prefer to keep them cool, mm-hmm. frigi- uh, hard cheese once again. Yeah. And you can get, like I mentioned before, that, that cheese that's that block cheese that's kind of rubbery that doesn't oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look, if you like it, go for it. I Whatever think the kids don't mind it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But, but there are those little um, those cheeses that come in a little circle thing. And oh, with little, the wax, the wax-covered cheese? Oh, they're Baby Bell, yep. Yeah, that, yeah. Uh, and I think they need refrigeration. Laughing Cow. Right? You're Laughing talking about Cow, Laughing that's Cow. the one, yeah. yeah, yeah. And they're kind of a 
funny cross between a like, like a, a, a soft cheese, a soft, and a, like a Philadelphia creamy bit, cheese type yeah. thing, and a normal cheese. Yeah, yeah. but it, I think that's sort of like a towards the end of the trip solution mm-hmm. to put in a wrap with maybe I don't know some tu- like tuna is a good one. Can yeah. can I, they? I used to like pouches of tuna because they they're flat. And you can pack they heaps pack in. They pack a bit better. But I can't find them as much anymore. Mm. So you take cans of tuna, which means you've got to pack the cans out and they take up more space. But mm. tuna is a good one to have in for lunches and that sort of thing mm-hmm. or to add to pasta, to make a pasta sauce yeah. with some, um, I can't think of the word, tomato paste. I don't know why tomato that was so paste, hard yeah, to work yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, just to make some some basic sauces. But we're talking late in the trip for that. So yeah. I guess uh, I don't know if we're getting a bit off topic here, but we're talking about keeping food fresh. We're talking about the end of your trip. If you've been gone that long, you're going to need to take some stuff that just lasts in your car, you are. aren't you? But yeah. um, I can't think of any other tips for the fresh stuff other than just don't be scared of taking it. Use it early and there's a few ideas we've given, I suppose, to try and keep them fresh for as long as you can in your car. Yeah. Things like, and also fruits like watermelons and rock melons. Like, there are uh, other fresh items that have their own natural packaging and things like that. Yep. But I think ultimately, it, don't be afraid of taking fresh food. I guess is probably the no. what we're, what we're talking about. Yep. Um, and you don't necessarily need to have to work. Yeah, yeah just rely on your packaged or your pre-packaged foods and things like that. Um, yeah. If it's a weekend away, you should be able to eat fresh from those. Oh, absolutely. Even with a nice box. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Even with a nice box. Just yeah. keep it, yeah, have a nice cool ventilated area to put it. If you've yep. got an ice box, use ice bricks, um, yep. like good quality ice bricks and things like not that loose instead ice. of not loose ice. N- yep. Loose ice is terrible. Yeah. Um, I think you've talked about using newspaper before. From yeah, memory, yeah. It's like I, think a- I think I mentioned that earlier, but um, yeah, just sort of layering your, your um, ice box. So meat is one thing that I, I, I'll – plan to take meat but i'll freeze it before i go and it goes in the bottom of my ice box mm. and i kind of monitor it and at the point at which it's defrosted i'll then cook it because i know yeah. if i'm just using an ice box i know that if it's just getting soft it's still safe temperature mm. um but up until then it was helping keep the ice box cold but it's food i'm eventually going to yeah. eat so, so that'll go in yeah, the bottom it's got a couple of different functional uses that's for right yeah. yeah and then i'll put that in there and then i use like a a few layers of newspaper mm-hmm. and then put more food on top of that and it kind of helps to trap the cold air in the ice box lay down in the ice box to keep that food fresher for longer and then on the very top when you open the open the lid you're just disturbing the air around the food that you're using for that day and the idea around that is i'm trying not to open the fridge too much, too much. everything on top is what i that's need for right. the day open it for breakfast open it for lunch open it for dinner and that's it yeah, uh, I think if you can have like your snacky foods or your lunch foods maybe being things that don't need refrigeration and then having your main dinner foods, then you're limiting the amount of time that you're opening your, yep. your ice box and therefore that stuff's going to stay colder and fresher for yeah. longer. I reckon the ultimate way though is vacuum sealing. Yep. Uh, refrigeration if you can and combining vacuum sealing with dehydration. Now, we've got a, a, a few articles on the Snowy's blog about that if you're interested. Uh, and I, we have a YouTube video too on using a domestic the, vacuum sealer, yeah, vacuum I believe. vacuum sealer, that's it. Um, just to give you an idea on how, how they work. But for those who don't know, vacuum sealer, basically just um, you put the food in, in the bag, it's you sort of clamp it in this little machine, machine and, yeah. and it sucks all the air and oxygen out and the oxygen and seals what, it with and, like and seals heat. it yeah. yeah so it's a bit like you um i guess you get uh I'm trying to think of an example like you get that soft rice that's partially cooked but it's in like a vacuum sealed bag it kind of does that I does suppose. yeah it does yeah. i mean another great thing about dehydrated uh vacuum sealers damn it why am i getting those two mixed <laughs> up so much but yeah the vacuum sealers um you know, my grandparents, for example, they love to go away on fishing trips and they might catch more fish than they actually want to eat on oh, that trip. Yeah. So they take a 12-volt vac sealer with them because it allows them to essentially fill it and prep all the fish and yep. chuck the fillets in, dehydrate them whilst they're away, and that way they're transporting Dehydrate or vacuum seal. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> my I knew Lord. what you meant. Vacuum yeah, sealer. vacuum sealer. If you can dehydrate. I don't know oh, how you go with dehydrated fish fillets, but <laughs> with vacuum sealer, <laughs> it could work. Vacuum seal, vacuum sealer. I reckon it would take a while to dehydrate it fish It would, fillet. but yes, vacuum, vacuum 
appealing if yeah. you're someone who goes away and does fishing, things like yeah. that. That can be yeah. handy to have yeah. that with you. And they can run off 12 volt, 240 volt, so um, pretty handy to have. And if you've got yeah. leftovers from one meal, you can re- reseal it mm-hmm. and it lasts longer in the fridge for, yeah. for the next one. So yeah. that's the ultimate. So we have got some information on that on the Snowy's blog and also on our Snowy's YouTube channel. Yep. Um, we'll put some links in the show notes below on that if you're interested in yeah, those things. Idea. But they can be yep. – if you've got a big family in particular – um, I think it's worth taking a little bit of time before you go away just to prep a few meals and if you can afford adding a vacuum sealer and possibly a dehydrator but you can use an oven, oven. as well but you, you need to be pretty well prepared. I know when I do sort of dried fruit for the kids it's, it's like a day that the oven's yeah. on to dehydrate it. So You can't get around use. a vac sealer but you probably could get around a dehydrator. You could so do. a vac yeah. sealer is a really good investment. Yep, yeah. I don't think I've got anything else to add. Just quickly processing everything in my mind, I reckon yeah, no, there's some pretty good ideas yeah. there. But I have no doubt that someone who's tuning in mm-hmm. as part of a Snowy's community, Snowy's family, has got some pretty good tips on particular foods to take yep. camping. Uh, I know it's probably one of the things I enjoy the least prepping for camping. I like packing the car, the jigsaw of packing everything in the car. The planning for the meals is the one thing that I reckon I dread the most. Yeah. And going to the supermarket, buying it all. And I dread it, it as all. well. It's pretty much like my main main job is to take care of the, <laughs> the food. Because like the most, yeah. I'm the one who likes cooking, like dislikes cooking the least, if that makes yeah, sense. Okay. So I yeah. always draw the short straw on that one. Yeah. Um, and I think it's just, yeah, easier when there's all four kids just to get it all banged out. But yep. um, yeah, I think. If you if you can if you can prepare and you get in in the habit of sort of knowing what works for you on the trips mm. that you go on and things like that, but I, yeah, I'd really love to hear from uh, from you guys out there for yeah. other hot tips and tricks and even just your favorite camping meals. Like yep. we're not just talking about fresh food. Hit us up with your favorite recipes when you yeah. go camping. That'd be we, amazing. We've talked about not wanting to spend time cooking, but it can be fun, especially if you have a campfire. Like camp oven cooking is, mm. is good fun, so it you can prepare fun. to to do something cooking but not every night we don't want to spend the whole evenings cooking cooking sometimes you just no. want to sit and relax but i think that's it that's but it. uh as long as i said we want to hear from you so we've got a facebook group the snow is camping show facebook group so please jump on there uh let us know if you've got something you want us to discuss in future episodes or if you've got mm-hmm. something to add to what we've said here today because we'd love your advice and i'm sure anyone else who's out there trying to prep for camping and doing the bit that we don't like, which is prepping the food. We'd love any advice. Take the notes and it's going to make next preparation for camping so much easier for Absolutely. all of our listeners. Yep. Um, and if you want to stay tuned in to our podcast, jump on to your favourite uh, podcast aggregator, wherever you tune in. Uh, you should be able to find us there, the Snowy's Camping Show. I think that's all we've got to yeah, add. Tune in next week for another episode. We'll another episode. Check out our show notes. Um, yep. But other than that, we'll catch you next week. Yeah. Thanks, guys. See no, you next time. Catch you later. Bye.